So when I was first learning quantum mechanics, I found myself uh, being really confused about the difference between the time-independent Schrodinger equation and the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. And I thought that they were the same equation, and that if I just if I just took this equation and somehow got rid of this time here, and 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 maybe by integrating somehow and got rid of the time, I would end up with with this equation right here. And it turns out that that's not the case. These are actually totally different equations um, with, with different uses, different meanings. Um, so I just wanted to kind of explain these two now that I, I think I actually get it. Um, so let's look first at the time-independent Schrodinger equation. Uh, so it's right here. And all the time-independent Schrodinger equation is is an eigenvalue equation. So uh, we have the Hamiltonian right here. Uh, we have our eigenvectors here and our eigenvalue right here. So that's that's really the key to uh, at least uh, unlocking my confusion about uh, the time-independent Schrodinger equation is that these are only the eigenvectors. They're not any old vector. They're just the eigenvectors or, or the eigenstates. Uh, and so really what you're doing with this equation, anytime you're using it, you might see it in different forms. This is kind of a, a, a generic form. Um, but anytime you're using this, what you're trying to do is find the eigenstates and the eigenvalues. Um, and if you have those, the time, the time independent Schrodinger equation isn't useful for you. So if you're trying to solve the particle in a box problem to find the, the eigenstates and the eigenvalues, you're using this time independent equation. So let's, let's just write that down here. Um, so this is the eigenvalue eigenvalue, and this right here is the eigenstate. Um, and I learned recently that eigen uh, just means uh, the same uh, in German or something like that. Um, so it's really just um, states that when you operate on them, they stay the same, and um, this is the, the value. Or maybe it's self. I don't know. I might be lying to you. Something like that, though. Um, all right, so that's, that's an overview of the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And now uh, let's talk about the uh, time-dependent uh, equation. So unlike uh, the, the independent equation that has eigenstates uh, in it, the, the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, these I wrote a, a psi instead of an e with a, with a subscript here to, to show that this really applies to any old state. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be an eigenstate. It can be an eigenstate, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, so when you use the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, what you're trying to do is, is to say, given a state, uh, how does it change with time? Uh, and, and you can use the Hamiltonian and, and this, this equation to figure that out, right? This is, this is how the state changes with time. It's the time derivative of the state. Um, now it turns out that when you're actually using this, if you if you want to do it, use the time dependent Schrodinger equation to see how something changes with time, really uh, you're you're going to want to have these eigenstates. So you'll probably want to use the time independent uh, equation first to get this, the eigenstates and eigenvalues, um, and then you can use those um, to to figure out how the the state changes with time. And so you would write, you'd rewrite this, um, let's keep that. Um, you would rewrite your, your state, whatever, whatever the initial state is. You might, and you might specify that it's at time equals zero, time equals zero. Um, um, and then what, what is this state? Well, it'll be, it'll be some combination of these um, eigenstates. So, um, it'll be a sum, so it's a linear combination of those eigenstates. So sum over i of, of some coefficient i, um, and then um, just these eigenstates. So it'll, you know, maybe there are two eigenstates um, in, a, in a simple system where you only had two, two possible states, um, two eigenstates. Um, then any other state you could have would just be a combination of those things, and you you would you would add them up with their coefficients. Um, 
then it turns out the thing that changes is, is um, what changes with time with this derivative here, what changes with time uh, are the coefficients. So um, any, anyway, um, we're not going to solve um, or, or go through an example with either of these uh, in this video, but hopefully that, that helps clear it up. Uh, I know I would have, I, I was confused about this for a long time, so. Uh, the time-independent equation is just to get the eigenstates and the eigenvalues. The time-dependent equation is to figure out how any given state, not just an eigenstate, uh, evolves with time. 